Today's episode is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash figure out your life with over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, and Kindle. Now let's get to the show. Welcome to Figure Out Your Life Podcast, a podcast where we try to find the answers to life's everyday questions. I'm your host, Toya T, aka Toya T with a PhD, aka your sister from another mister, aka your sis that will help you sift through all the mess, your friend that will go out and get the answers for you so you don't have to. Uh, also, your friend with a PhD who is currently in between academic institutions and actively looking for a new job so let me stop being silly welcome back guys i'm so happy that i finally got back to you i know that this podcast is super duper uber late but that's okay because it's done i did it uh if you follow the instagram for the podcast which is figure out your life pod on Instagram, you would have seen that I said that the podcast was going to be late because I'm traveling. I'm currently in Thailand. I left last Tuesday and I thought that I would be able to record a little bit earlier, but I've had a jam packed last few days between getting to Thailand, adjusting to the time difference, and then also trying to hit the ground running and, you know, get as much out of my trip as possible. And that is pretty much what I've been doing. And I'm actually in my second location. I started off in Chiang Mai, Thailand, which is in northern Thailand. And then I've moved on to Krabi, Thailand, which is in the south. And this is actually my last day in Krabi. And I'm moving on to Phuket, which is a lot more well-known among tourists. It's a big tourist attraction. And I wanted to get this out before I moved on to my third destination. And so that is why it's late. Also, if the sound quality is a little bit off, it's because I'm recording directly into my computer. I don't have my microphone and my setup. And so uh, hopefully you can hear me clearly. I think you can, but I actually cannot hear myself. I usually when I record with my microphone, I can hear, you know, the feedback. I can hear myself in my headphones. I can't. So I'm assuming that you can hear me clearly. I can see that the podcast software is working and it's catching my voice but if you hear like the AC or a car going by or you know any kind of no- background noise it's because I'm recording uh, from my computer in my hotel room it's pretty early so I'm hoping that I won't get you know kids in the background screaming or anything but also I wanted to update you guys on uh, my job search hunt one Uh, I actually got a census job. So your girl Toya T is not going to be unemployed for at least two months. (laughs) I got a 2020 U.S. census job. I highly suggest that if you're looking for full-time work or temporary full-time work or temporary part-time work and you work full-time and you just want to make some extra money, definitely sign up and apply for a U.S. census job. I will be working as an enumerator. I did this before for the last census, the 2010 census. When I lived in Atlanta, I was an enumerator. It was a good way for me to get out, explore Atlanta, and get some extra pocket change while I was doing my dissertation research. And now for me, it works well because, you know, I'm still in between jobs and I'm trying to make some extra money and I do need to be able to pay off this Thailand trip. So uh, it's a good thing to look into. It's really simple to um, to apply for, and they pay very well. I'm telling you right now. I don't. It depends on the state that you're in, but for Massachusetts, I do know they're paying about twenty seven fifty an hour for um, for the part time positions, and so that's just really great. I can't wait. And also, just before I I move on. They pay for the training too. So like they fully pay you out um, for this work and you can do it on your own time, especially as a numerator. Numerators are the ones that go out 
and uh, help people answer the census questions or encourage them to answer the census questions. And you end up actually doing it within your area, your wherever you live, your community. And so you don't have to go into communities that you're not familiar with or comfortable with. So just, again, apply for a U.S. Census job if you're looking to make a little extra cash, because I know we all could use it. And maybe you too can go to Thailand or wherever you want to go to uh, with uh, your part-time or full-time census money. Anyway, I will leave uh, the information on how to apply in the show notes. So let's move on to the topic for today. Uh, as you can already see, I know you all can read, but I'm going to say it to you again. This week's episode or this this episode is about figuring out how to deal with the interview waiting game. So I didn't know if I wanted to continue with this job search, job, um, tips and, and tricks, uh, but... I got a really great response to the last episode on how to create the right uh, mindset for a job search. Surprisingly, like uh, the last three podcasts that I put out, episodes I put out, this one uh, has the most downloads and listens. And so I'm assuming that there are quite a few people like me who are uh, in between jobs or looking for a new job or looking for to switch into a new career and are looking for tips, looking uh, for ways to keep motivated. And so this is what I'm bringing to you guys. If you want me to go more into depth about different parts of the job search process, please let me know. You can email me. You can uh, send me a message on any of the social media platforms. Of course, all of my contact information is in the show notes. So hit me up if you would like me to do something maybe about um, interview tips or, you know, like getting dressed for, uh, for interviews, um, or anything of that sort. So I'm particularly doing this one because I am currently in the waiting game, um, for a job. So I had an interview and I am currently in that awkward waiting, like the waiting silence period. And I know there's a couple other people that are in there and I wanted to address that and help you guys out. So first things first, uh, when you start thinking about the job hunting or the job search process, funny thing is it's very similar to dating, <laughs> very, very similar to dating. Like you want to impress the interviewer or the employer and you feel nervous and self-conscious on how they perceive you during your first encounter. So if that's through a phone interview or a video interview or in-person interview, you know, you have that kind of like, it's just like a first date where you, you know, you dress to impress, you put out your best qualities, you are very self-conscious about what you say or what you do. And then afterwards, you're like rethinking and talking to your friends about how you think it went and what do you think you could have done better or how you think they perceived you. And the interview process is just the same way. Um, we're trying to work hard to make a great uh, and lasting impression with the interviewer and whoever else was involved in the interview process. And when you go home, you are sitting by the phone anticipating their call for a second encounter, for that second date, that second interview. And so I really wanted to address that because even if we, we'd hate the job, that's the funny thing. Even if we hate the job or hated the date, we just want to be picked. We want to be chose. We want to get, we still want to get that job offer because it feels good to be wanted. It feels good to be reinforced. And as someone who has been on the job search, the job hunt for about five years, I can personally tell you that it is good to get reinforcement, to get positive affirmations, positive feedback, because I have gotten to uh, the final stages of several jobs, and then they offered it to someone else. And it's so disappointing. It made me kind of feel like, what's wrong with me? Is there something wrong with me? Like, do you do like, is there, is there something I need to change about myself? Am I not qualified? Like, it's all these kind of things. It's like that you think about yourself, you get really self-conscious when you get so many no's, uh, even though you shouldn't be looking for validation outside of yourself. But still, I mean, this is very, like, you know, it's a, it's a job, especially if you are currently unemployed. This is important. This is your livelihood. This is being able to take care of yourself uh, and live in this world. And so, 
it could be very nerve wracking and stressful during this waiting period, especially once you get that, that call for an interview, once you've gone to the interview and you've done your best, you've, you know, put your best foot forward. You just really want to be chosen. You really want them to say, I like you. I like, I really think you're great. You're amazing. And we want you to, to come back and, and, and develop a long-term relationship. (laughs) Um, but you know, you can feel completely blindsided a lot of people I feel feel completely blindsided by the lack of communication that happens after an interview, even when you thought it went well. Like for me, I know personally that like for every single time that I've gotten to the final stage, I have thought that I did very well, except for one. One, I knew like I did not do very well, but it was a group interview a- atmosphere. And I know that I personally don't do well in group interviews as extroverted as some people think I am, I really don't do well in spaces where I don't know anybody. Uh, I am very much an introverted extrovert. And so, you know, one-on-one I can, I, it's very easy for me to open up and to be charismatic, but when it's a group atmosphere and everyone is kind of vying for the attention of the interviewer, I just kind of shrink back because I don't want to seem pushy. I don't want to overpower anyone or talk over anyone. And sometimes I'm just not sure of where to, to, um, to interject or to, you know, uh, speak up. Usually I wait for a lull. And I think for most employers, they're looking for the people who are just like super aggressive, super like, oh my gosh, in their face. Or if you're thinking about it as in dating, you know, like think about The Bachelor or something like that. It's it's the one that is like super thirsty, super, in, in, you know, on top of the uh of the bachelor or the bachelorette that is like all up on them, showing all their goods, giving them tons of compliments. Those are the ones that are usually the ones that get picked. Uh, and I'm the one that doesn't get the rose because I wasn't sucking up enough or pushing myself ahead of someone else, uh, because I don't want to, um, you know, be rude or talk over them. So I know personally that when I know there's a group interview, it's like, oof, let like me and other candidates, like I know someone else is going to get it. But in general, I just find it so fascinating how, like after you've gone through the interview process and you've done all this work, how long it can take. And sometimes it's a per, it's like, it's yourself. Like you feel like it's taking longer than you anticipated. And so maybe they get back to you in two days and it feels like two weeks, (laughs) but in some cases it is two weeks. And in other cases, it's a whole month, um, or a couple months before you hear back from them. And that is nerve wracking. It's very, very nerve wracking, but here's some things that I want you guys to uh, think about. One silence is not always an indicator of anything. As my parents have been telling me, no news can be good news. Or as I have I've started to see it, um, no news is at least not bad news. So you haven't been rejected yet. You haven't gotten the thanks, but we have decided to go with another candidate, you know, line. You haven't gotten there yet. And so silence sometimes can be good news because maybe they're still um, processing. Maybe they're still deliberating and trying to go through the, the candidates. Maybe they're still interviewing. Maybe something has happened unexpectedly that has delayed the, uh, the, um, decision-making the hiring process. It could be budget. It could be a personal emergency among the, uh, recruitment or hiring committee. And so there's plenty of things that could have happened that causes this silence. Uh, and two, there are things you can do to help you survive this way. And this is where I'm coming in. This is where I am bringing you Six tips on how to follow up after an interview to make the most of your first impression. So this is how you can follow up without looking thirsty, without looking like you're desperate and are clingy or overbearing. So let's start off with tip number one. Before you leave the interview, ask the interviewer what are the next steps. 
Now, this is also a great question to ask at the end of the interview. You know, when like after they've asked you a gazillion questions and then they ask you that. So is there any questions that you have for us question? This is one that you can ask that is probably not covered in all the questions that they asked you beforehand or all the information they give you during the interview. So you can say, what are the next steps? This should give you insight into their hiring protocol and inform you on how to adjust your follow-up accordingly. So for example, the last few interviews I went on, um, I was told when to expect to hear from them. One actually told me the process they will go through, such as meeting with the recruitment team on, let's say, the Wednesday, and then we will be able to get back to you by the Friday. Like, they just gave me the whole thing. Like, this is what we're going to do after. And so you know that you don't have to sit there and, you know, think that they've, that, that the silence in between your interview and when they get back to you is about you, that it's actually a part of their hiring process. And so uh, for this particular job, I knew, okay, there's my interviews on this date and they're not going to review my interview or the interview notes from my interview until next week. And so I can, I should find a way to relax or move on because they're not going to get back to me until a week later or two weeks later. Also, what was great is that they told me that if I am, you know, a potential or a tentative uh, candidate, if they're going to give me a preliminary offer, that then after that they would ask me for references. And so I knew exactly how it would go. This is the interview, then the recruitment meeting where they make the decision, then they will contact me regardless. If they're interested, then they'd ask me for my references and check that. And then after they check my references, as long as everyone says that I have done what I said I've done and I'm not a bad person and I'm a great candidate, then I would get the offer. So that is also very helpful. Um, not a lot of employers will give you this information I found. Um, but it's, it's great when they do. I've also had experiences where they gave me a timetable when they were going to get back to me. So they say, okay, we'll get back to you in three weeks, three to four weeks, right? Or two, one to two weeks, which I hate because that is not a definite set date. So, um, as opposed to the one that I mentioned before, where they say, I'm going to get back to you on Friday. I'm going to get back to you on Monday. Like, you know, when that day comes, what to expect. I hate it when they say one to two weeks because, or three to four weeks, when they give you that, that wide, um, time frame where you could just at any moment, it could be Monday, it could be Tuesday, it could be Friday, it could be any of these days that they get back to you. Um, and I actually had an experience where they told me the timetable one or two weeks and then the two weeks were over and I didn't hear anything and I had to contact them. And that was nerve wracking that I had to go and contact them, especially since I didn't get the job. And so it's like you put yourself out there and, and went to say like, Hey, did you like me? And they told you to your face. No, we didn't. (laughs) And that's, that is pretty bad. Uh, number two, after the interview, write down some notes and questions that you may still have, such as the interviewers names. Like for me, if you're like me and you're really good with faces, but not so great with names, like I swear to God, I try, I try my hardest to remember people's names sometimes. But when I meet people and they're like, hi, I'm Chelsea. Hi, I'm, you know, James. I hear that. And I say, yes, hi, I'm Latoya. And then completely forget their names two minutes later. And it's helpful when people have like name tags. And so for my last interview, it was great that everyone had to have their, um, like their security tag with them or their security, um, ID card, their ID cards on them. And so I was able just to like peek at their ID card. So just to make sure that you said, uh, Vivian and not like Beverly, and I don't call you Beverly and you're really Vivian. That's actually happened to me at a networking event. (laughs) for uh, my high school where this guy I met, uh, a a, a fellow alum had uh, let me cut in line and he introduced himself and 
uh, I wanted to say thank you to him and I called him something completely different. And when I looked at his name tag, I was like, oh no, why were you calling this guy Steve when his name is James? <laughs> Where'd you get Steve from? But for the interview, like, remember, like, if you want, if you need to remember the interviewer's names, which is very important, like, if you want to say thank you to them, write down the interviewer's names. Uh, also, you might want to write down challenges associated with the role, so that might be something that you can ask them. Um, you can also, again, write down uh, the next steps. All these things are very important and will be helpful for you when you make your follow-up. Number three, now here is something that is quite debated about when so after the interview and you send a thank you note should you send a handwritten note versus an email so uh one both of them are appropriate you should send a thank you note after you've gone through the interview process it shows that you respected their time and that you're interested in the position but here's the thing i have heard people that have advocated for the handwritten note and I've had her people advocate for the email note. And I think it depends on your preference. So I went to a job search workshop and the instructor highly recommended the handwritten note. She was talking about like, you know, when I interview people, it, you know, I absolutely love when I receive the handwritten note. She suggested that you write the note and mail it immediately after the interview so that it gets to them as soon as possible. The problem with that that I have is that if you have crappy handwriting like I do, like not such so legible handwriting, uh, this could be a problem. This could actually uh, not come off as sweet or as, uh, or as uh, endearing um, or as impactful as you want if they can't read your your handwriting they can't read the note also think about it there's a reason why people call usps snail mail it's because it takes a long time even if you dropped it off immediately after like you pre-wrote this this interview note or you sat in your car or whatever went to a coffee shop right after your interview wrote this handwritten note put it in the mail or brought it directly to the post office to make sure that it got, um, it was going out the same day. There's several issues that can happen. One, things can get lost in the mail. Two, um, it takes some time for it to get there. Three, even if it gets to the office, to the, to the employer's address, it still probably has to go through like the mail room and that takes time. And then when it gets to them, it ends up in a pile of their mail. You don't know how much mail they have. You don't know how often they check their mail. I know at my last job, I didn't check my mailbox that often at all. And sometimes there'd just be piles of stuff in there. I know other of my colleagues also didn't check their mail that quite often and usually only check their mail once they got a package and received like an email from the administrative assistant that said, Hey, you have a package, go check your mailbox. That was usually only when they would check it. And so it might be the same thing where they have to go and physically walk to their mailbox to go check, to get their mail. And that could be like a week or weeks later. And even if they go take it, it might take them a long time to read it. I know that, uh, my mother, um, she doesn't like me to talk about her, but I'm just going to say, you know, my mom is a boss. She a boss. She a, she a lady boss. She a woman boss, girl boss. And um, she very she hires people. And so I was asking her, you know, do you prefer after an interview if candidates write you a handwritten note and mail it to you or do you prefer email? And she said she preferred email because uh, when she receives mail, especially when it's not work related, like immediate, like need to get done internal mail uh, from her within her job, she's not going to read it. <laughs> she's not going to read it. And you don't want that to happen. Uh, also, email is faster. It, it goes immediately. You can track it. You can put it as important. You can set it to let me know when they open the email. 
And so I personally prefer email, especially since you'll have the direct contact information of the interviewer since they probably have sent you interview details via email. So you can just reply back to that email. And uh, one thing about that, regardless of what you do, you should always send this follow up within 24 hours. Do not wait. And if you need some help on what to write in your your thank you note or your follow up email or note. Here are some things that you should include. And I looked this up because I myself, like I said, I send out the thank you note, but I love doing Google. And again, I do this research so you don't have to. So here's what you should include in your follow up note. One, tell them that you're still interested in the role. So you say, thank you for meeting with me. I'm very much interested in the role, blah, 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 blah. Uh, two, remind them why you're a strong candidate. Three, ask if there's any additional information you can provide to them to help them make their decision. And I'll point out that this one is actually a great question to ask after the interview also. So when they ask you, is there any questions you have for them? This is the question that I asked on my last interview is like, you know, is there any additional information that I can provide you to help you make your decision? And one of the interviewers was like, oh, you're getting straight to the point. You're serious. And I was like, yes, that was exactly the response I wanted to show that I am super interested in this position. I'm serious about getting this job working here with you. And so if there's anything that I didn't answer within the interview process during my presentation, during, you know, the whole interview, uh, please let me know and I'll give it to you. But you can also do that in the follow-up email. And then at the end, of course, thank them for their time. Thank them for their time. It is the easiest and the best way to end all emails, all correspondences with people. Thank you for your time, for your consideration. Best, your name. Send it. Number four, do an honest assessment of how you think you did. Admit your gaps. If you feel you did not fully represent yourself during the interview, address the issue. So within that follow-up email, you can put that in there or you can do it in person. For me, uh, the, the experience I had with my last interview, they actually just asked me right there, like before I left, uh, how did I feel about, you know, s s different parts of the interview process? How do I think I did? Is there any places where I think I could have improved? And I really appreciated that because it forced me to analyze, um, you know, my performance, analyze the information that I gave to them. And it also gave me a chance to turn down my inner critic because, you know, you're, if you're like me and you are constantly kind of just like nitpicking and, you know, overthinking things, then you might have thought that you did worse than you thought. And you might have thought that, oh gosh, I said the wrong word or I made a mistake here. And this is totally going to ruin my whole um, interview. And they're going to, I bombed it because I didn't, you know, go left when I was supposed to go right. Oh, I, I went left when I was supposed to go right. That's what I meant. And so uh, this is a great place for you to actually... Uh, talk about your weaknesses and how you would improve them. And so I liked that I was able to talk about like, well, I thought this didn't go so well. And if I had a chance to do it again, I would have actually done it differently. And this is how I would have done it differently. And this is why I would have done it differently. And so it shows that you are able to think on your feet, that you are able to take feedback, that you're able to, um, correct your mistakes. And it just kind of, it's an, it's an indication of your work ethic that you are someone who's not rigid, that you have, like I said in the last episode, you have a growth mindset that you're open to growing, to changing, to improving. And I think that is something that employers really like to see because they want to see your potential. They want to see that you have the potential to grow and to have a positive impact on the bottom line of the, of the business. So number five, Use the three strikes policy. Now, from the research that I did, I thought that was so interesting. Although when I think of three strikes policy, I always think of it as like a negative thing, like three strikes and you're out, you know, the three strikes laws and 
uh, places like California or I think, I don't know if they got rid of it, but you know, in terms of the legal industry, the legal field where, you know, if you commit three crimes, you end up in, in prison for life. And so it just seems like so negative to me, but it's interesting how they put it. So here's how it is on the three strikes policy. If you don't hear back from them after your interview, you can send up to two emails max. So you send up a follow-up email and say exactly what I said before. You're not asking really questions. You're just, again, reiterating your interest in the position. You're reminding them you're a strong candidate. Um, and then you're, again, asking them if they need further information, uh, if, if they, uh, further information to help them make their decision. Uh, and so if you don't hear back after you do those two emails and you're still waiting, this is when you make a phone call and you make one phone call. Do not call them more than once. You make one call, phone call to express your interest. Like I said, again, you do not demand answers. You don't say, Hey, you said you were going to contact me on Friday. What happened? You didn't call, you didn't contact me on the Friday. No, you're going to try to stay on top of the, the hiring process, the recruit, the the job process, you're just trying to make sure that you stay top of mind to them because that is half the battle, half the battle of the whole job search, job hunt, getting a new job process is making sure that they remember you. It's like I, like I said, just like dating, you just want to make sure that they remember you. You remember my face. You remember my name. You remember details about me and you were impressed by me. I made a lasting impression. And so that is what you're trying to do with these uh, follow-ups. But again, use the three strikes policy, two emails, one phone call if you don't hear from them. Number six, last tip. <clears throat> Put the interview out of your mind after you finish. I know, it's hard. It's very, very hard. Especially if you lack patience like I do. Just have no patience. And the people around me have no patience. They're like, hey, did you hear? Did you hear? Did you hear? I actually had a nightmare. I want to call it a nightmare, but maybe it's more like a dream. Um, no, I'm going to say it's a nightmare because a friend asked me, you know, did you hear back? And I like yelled at them and said, well, if I had heard back, I would have told you and blah, 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 blah. And I woke up and realized like that was a dream. You did not yell at your friend. You did not have this response. This is just because it's top of your mind and you're, you're, you're really just focusing too much on this interview. You cannot go back in time. You don't have a DeLorean. You don't have, you know, you can't go back in time and change anything. You just have to live with what you have done. Know that you have done your best and move on uh, because wondering and worrying about how you did the interview is a waste of your time. It is a waste of your time, your energy, your, your emotional like energy, because like you're working yourself up, uh, you know, overthinking it. You just have to like, let go and let God, as some people say, you know, just let it go. If you're meant to work with these people, if you're meant to work at this job, you will hear from them. If not, it's not the right job for you. And at least, you know, now, so you can move forward. So don't wait for any employer to get back to you after an interview. Keep the job search um, going. Keep applying. Uh, there's nothing better than having more than one job offer because then you feel real good about yourself. You, you're really feeling yourself. Like Beyonce said, you know, fill up myself. Fill up myself. Fill up myself. You know, just, you know, you can pop your collar because you have all these job offers because you kept you know, applying. Uh, and so you just, all, that's all you really can do. If you hear from them, you'll cross that bridge when you get to it, but there's no need to wait and worry about when and whether they'll be in touch because you don't have any control over that. And so don't wait for anybody when you're job hunting, do your best, put your best foot forward, do your follow up. Thank you. If you, uh, Use the three strikes policy. If you haven't heard from them after, you know, a significant amount of time, remember two emails, one phone call, and then let it go. Move on, move on to the, continue your job search until you hear back from them 
or until you get that new job. And so with that, I'm done with this section and I'm going to move on to figure this out. This one is going to be really quick. And I thought this was, you know, it, it applies to this. So here's what I want you guys to figure out for me. Why do jobs put out job calls when they fully intend to hire an internal candidate? I feel like just like working off this dating analogy, I feel like it's like flirting when you have no interest in a person or you're being a tease. Like you're like, ooh, I think you're so cute. You're so fun. I think we could we could get together. And when you get all into them and you get excited and you're like, oh, my gosh, you know, this person is really into me. This job is going to be perfect for me. It's so great. I'm going to send in all my job materials. I'm going to spend all this time, you know, um, crafting a uh a, a, a cover letter and making sure that my resume is tailored to this job. And then you find out that they weren't intending to hire anybody outside in the first place. They already had someone in mind and actually they only put it out because legally they had to uh, put out the job call so they could hire this person. Like the job call was only out for like a week because they needed to do it for legal reasons so that they can just give this person the job without facing any legal ramifications. And I just find that is just ridiculous. It's like, it is really just being a tease. And uh, one example that I can think of is that I had a friend from graduate school who actually saw a job that was posted by my former institution. And she contacted me and she was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I do. This fits it, it with my research interest. This is what I've been looking for. I feel like this job was, was made for me. And I had to say, okay, uh, you, you can apply, but I'm just going to let you know <laughs> that this job was actually tailored for somebody else within my department. And they, they want to give it to this person. They made it so they can give it to this person and only put out this call so they didn't have, you know, any issues. And so you can apply, but don't get your hopes up because it really isn't for you, unfortunately. Uh, and she thanked me for that information because, because again, you don't want to waste your time. And you don't want to get your hopes up. And it's a tease. It's, it's, a, it's flirting with absolutely no potential for a long-term relationship. And so if you could let me know why they continue to do this, I mean, how is this even legal? Like, I get that you have to put it out there, but like, what is the point? I know that you just can't continue to hire internal because then you would never get new people, new candidates in. This is also how you would, be, you would, this is how also that you, companies can uh, lack diversity within their, uh, within their employees, because they're just hiring the same people over and over again, hiring people within and not getting any new blood. But it just, it just kind of seems weird to me. So let me know, like, why do jobs do this? Why, why, why do they do this? And why is the federal government not spending more time, you know, investigating this if they know that this is what jobs do? Like, what is the point? Should there just be like an internal, uh, candidate, like a uh, job and then like, okay, it didn't work. So let's go and put it out to everyone else. I mean, I've seen some jobs that said that internal candidates get view viewed first. And then after, you know, two weeks, then they open it up to the external candidates, which I guess is what I'm asking all employers to do, but not all of them do that. Not all of them put that information out there that the internal candidates actually get, um, reviewed first and a chance at the job first and then the external candidates will be reviewed i just don't like it so with that i'm done this is real quick i just wanted to get it out there there actually will be another episode coming this week probably wednesday because i have one that is uh, specifically for valentine's day and for my single ladies and gentlemen out there um, who may feel kind of sad because valentine's day is coming up and you ain't got a bay but don't worry your girl toy t got some tips for you on how to get through this uh hallmark holiday this fake holiday that um you know everyone makes you feel like you need to have someone and make you feel bad about being single but you shouldn't be so 
Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you liked this episode and liked all the other episodes, please go ahead and share this episode with other people. Uh, Leave a review in Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening to this. And so if you're listening to this podcast on Spotify or Stitcher or SoundCloud or Google Podcasts, go ahead and leave me a review there. It's very helpful. Also... If you have any questions for me, you can go ahead and send it to me at Toya T at figureoutyourlifeblog.com or at figureoutyourlifeblog at gmail.com. Either way or social media. Again, all of the contact information is in the show notes. I'm thinking about doing a a listener letter section, but I have to have questions to be able to do that or a QA and a episode. And so if you have any questions and that you want me to answer, just go ahead and contact me and we can get that started. But for now, I hope you guys have a absolutely wonderfully blessed morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time you're listening to this, wherever you are, I just want you guys to be safe and healthy. And if you're looking for a new job, uh, good luck. If you're waiting to hear back from a job after an interview, remember, you can't do anything about it. Do all the steps I told you and just let it go and move forward because if it's for you, it is for you. No one can take any opportunity that is meant for you. With that, talk to you later. All right. Bye.